All right. I don't want to beat a dead horse, but while I was changing the audio for those of you at home, someone in class asked me a question, and I think it bears repeating one more time. And I'm going to try and give you a couple more examples because the question basically dealt with that ethics and morals were the exact same thing. And I'm going to challenge your thought here that that's not true. Let me give you two great examples. Think about a defense attorney, a defense attorney who is representing a man who has murdered somebody. Morally, that person may think that murder is reprehensible and should be punished. However, under the ethics of the American Bar Association, he is to provide the best counsel to that person to prove his not guilty or innocence that he can. If he falls short of that, he could be in trouble by the bar. So that's a great example of where a person is working inside of a ethics that maybe don't represent his own personal morals and he has chosen to still do his job the best he can based on the ethical principles of the bar and the law legal system. Another example, and I'm going to also put this out that a lot of times when these have conflict, conflicting, David, when these are conflicting, they are hotbed topics, okay? And you'll see what I mean. Another one might be a doctor who has pledged to save a man under the ethical practice of, the, of medicine, yet also may believe that a person has the right to die, that a person can choose their right to die. Doctors can't assist that. And if you remember, there was a huge case maybe 20 years ago, Dr. Kevorkian, who was trying to practice medicine based on his, print, his own ethical morals and was helping people commit suicide because he believed that a person had a right to die. But the ethics of the medical association says that they can't do that. That violates their ethics. And he actually got arrested and lost his medical license. So there are two prime examples, David, and I hope you understand what I'm saying that a person has a different moral belief than the body of ethics that they work for. So it's highly possible in any location. Um, those are two hotbed topics. Thumbs up? Cool. All right. Sorry. So let's talk about, keep going and talk about some more responsibilities of the escrow agent. Insurers and insurance companies are in a position of trust. People look to them and trust them that they are making payments and buying a service and they are trusting that that service will be there. The public expects the insurer to fulfill the promise that they made in the contract, whether it's life insurance, car insurance, or title insurance. All right, so the agent that is representing the underwriter has a huge public trust and represents them accurately and will hold them to the ethics of that company. The public expects the insurer to conduct business fairly, openly, and honestly. If an agent is untrustworthy and somebody gets harmed, say the agent lied about what the coverage was, or that there were no liens on the property and the policy gets harmed, that could cause repercussions down the line. The underwriter may become financially insolvent because of a claim they had to pay out. They could lose business through word of mouth in the industry. There are many negative ramifications if a person working inside of that ethics does not follow the ethical practice. So that's why it's very important for you to understand that you need to be ethical at all times, even when it gets hard. Now, 
my dad used to tell me that ethics are what you do when no one's watching. And if you think about that, that was probably one of the smartest things my father ever told me. I meant, if you don't, if you're driving down the road and you don't throw trash out the window because there's three cars around you, that is, what's that called? Uh, <laughs> peer pressure. You don't throw it out because you don't want anybody to see you. If you don't throw the trash out when you're on a country road by yourself because you believe it's wrong, that is the moral, all right? So ethics and morals are what you do when no one's watching. If you choose to do it and work practice and practice ethically at all times, it might be hard. It may involve me, well, now I got to carry that trash in the house and throw up my trash bag and then put it in the dumpster. Or when I get gas, I got to clean my car out and pull all the trash out. So it, it may be a little hard, maybe a little more work, but if it's what you believe to be true and right, then that's what you do. If you do it because somebody's watching, oh, well, I'm not going to lie because three people have looked at this policy, that's just peer pressure. If you give someone bad news and go, look, dude, there's a lien on the property that we can't clear because of whatever, that's the right thing to do. You don't want to lie and go, oh, yeah, we get that. Don't worry about it. Just go ahead and close on the deal. All right. So it is the responsibility of all people involved in that title insurance process, not just the underwriting agent. It could be the closer. It could be the sales rep. All of you have to follow that concept and make sure that you are practicing ethically and hopefully morally for you personally. All right.